Hello again. Now, for those of you who've watched some of my previous videos, you may remember that I did a video regarding how to have rerun scripts, particularly around SQL. So today we're going to look at the Microsoft Management Instrumentation, or WMI for short. Now, what I've just kicked off on screen, for those of you who are wondering, is the WMI Explorer. Now, I'm going to include a quick link to the PowerShell that basically creates this nice little console and from that point of view it's a great tool and what I want to show you is what you can achieve with this Explorer as part of your tool set because one of the things is WMI is rather large and a very powerful framework but it makes it a little bit difficult to navigate your way around so here I'm going to look at SQL Server and as you can see you have this subset of things in terms of classes to look at and the WMI Explorer lets you go through that in a much more structured way than you would normally be able to do slowly working your way through documentation or just querying one item at a time. Now there's two things I want to focus on here, one of which is that you always have a computer management here, so in this case it's version 13, that refers to the SQL version, which in this case is 2016. Uh, yes, I know the numbers are not great for how do we say logic, but anyway, it's version 13. The other part of it is that almost always if you're dealing with Microsoft software, it will come under the Microsoft key. Now in PowerShell, we can find this out by using the get WMI object, then the name and the class which we're looking for. So you can see I'm simply gonna go look up the namespace that matches where I was previously exploring and I'm going to go get the same class set, so bear with me, it takes a little while to type out. Now once I've got those, I have the ability to return values from them, and that's where it kind of starts to be an important thing. So as an example, let's say that I want to run a PowerShell script that does something like install SQL, and a good example of that might be a DSC resource. But I don't want to install SQL necessarily twice, and I don't want to have the error which would be generated of trying to install over the top with the same instance name. So the first thing I might want to do is use WMI to get that instance name and see if it already exists. So if I look through quickly what I have already generated from getting the output of the namespace query, you can see that we have a list of variables, but the most important one in our case is the instance name. So I'm really going to then reduce my query down to just the instance name by typing out the where object, then the value I'm looking for, in this case instance name, and then equaling out the type of name for that instance. So in my case it's the default one, so that's the MS SQL server. So as long as that exists, I will get an output. As long as it doesn't exist, I won't get any output. And that's kind of where we start to go with this. Because from the point of view of testing whether the server exists or not, it's important to be able to get a result. If the result is null, then we assume that it doesn't exist. So if we forgive my typo for a moment, we'll see that I finally get the result I'm looking for when I put in the equals, the MS SQL server. And now I have an output. Now taking that output is one option and I can use plenty of, let's say variables that are produced to get what I, my desired state might be. I can also see whether the service is starting automatically, what type of service, what the file paths are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So really useful information for some of the possibilities. But I can also just simply use it to determine if the instance exists. So here's an example of how I can use that query in a slightly more structured way to simply determine is it installed, is it not installed based on the instance name. So first of all we're going to test that MS SQL Server 1 doesn't exist and therefore returns a not installed value. And then we're going to correct our value and then just run it again and prove that yes that does prove that it's installed and all works normally and that's how it should work in terms of proving this. Now this is a very simple way of being able to put something into WMI and getting a result out such as is it there, is it not there and it works for pretty much any Microsoft service that you care to mention. So hopefully you found this useful, if you did give us a like or alternatively subscribe, I do plan to do more of these in future.